Okay, so today we'll be talking about Z3D, um, which is a way to generate 3D models based off of images. Uh, there's quite a few things that do this, like Meshly and Hanya that I've ran locally. Um, they're great. Um, but the problem is they don't really generate very solid meshes. Uh, what I mean by that is when you have um, a mesh generated from AI, it has to build the model in certain ways. Now, I can't speak for the validity of how C3D does theirs, but I can say that when I generate an axe in most 3D applications that use AI, they're just unusable. They're like if I had taken this mesh, which for example was an axe I've generated from four different images. We go over that in a little bit later in the video, but right now what you can see is it's done a pretty decent job with the textures. They're a little blobby, a little pixelated here and there. But the main thing that a lot of 3D artists are going to be absolutely baffled by is the mesh is good. Now here it might be a little deceptive to what we're all seeing um, from a film perspective, this is more of a game perspective uh, and is good right out of the bat if you export it. Uh, just as an example, we can grab USDZ and download that. That was extremely quick and extremely easy. As we head over to Blender, I have two files open here so we can have a look. When we drag said file over Blender, we can just import it. Like we just imported this axe. Now we have this axe, lovely. We can go from workbench over here to shaded. We can see we just have our axe. That lovely, that easy, that nice. Let's turn off our compositing. And what we're getting is we've got a lovely axe, nice and textured, no problems, wonderful. Uh, if we go into the topology, click Alt J in Blender, and that will just give us a quad view. Now, these are good. These are they're mostly unusable in most cases with a lot of AI, but I can grab this as a loop. I can grab this complete loop. I can go around that loop. Now, what's happening is there might be some vertices in here that are hiding and they're not allowing me to grab the actual loop. That's nothing to do with the issue with the way that the model was generated. In fact, you can just click A in edit mode and M and merge by distance and remove all of those pesky little vertices that are causing issues with some Thing like that now you can just grab the whole loop i mean the whole loop for each of them and you could do something like start marking your uvs um this is great this means you can get whole seam lines and unwrap a model in five ten minutes pretty much unheard of to have an axe of this quality and remember on the actual site so where the axe was generated you have multiple options in the uh advanced tab which we just drop down here and you could actually have it as 50k or 4,000. 4, a lot of people might say, well, 4,000 is still too high. What you have to remember is certain shapes need to keep effect, meaning if the object relied on more faces to make its shape, well then, you know, how are you gonna do it unless you have 4,000? So I'm playing a bit devil's advocate on the side side, but that makes sense to me. Now we come back and we look at the fact that we can get it unwrapped. We can get a result like this, where the model has been seamed out, completely unwrapped, ready for use. You know, everything's packed, good. You can then send that to a program like Substance Painter. Now these are paid programs, things like Marmoset and Substance, if you want to bake a high poly to a low poly, and if you want to texture it in a, you know, a, a figure game standard workflow. You don't have to use these, there's no problem with just painting your textures or baking your textures in Blender, it does it all. I'm just showing you um, sort of a, a, a standard game flow. So now, bomb, you've got an axe. How is this working? It's working off of things like normal maps that are baking details uh, onto normal. So you're keeping your same resolution in the model. You're just adding a normal map. Now, a lot of people will go, no, this is so obvious. Um, so this is how games work you know if you work in the scene or whatever all of this is kind of like why are you telling me this but there's a lot of people i think that'll be using these applications and coming into this world as a, a a new experiencer of it and because they don't have all of the technical skills it all just seems sort of overwhelming and a little whoa i can't be doing that but at the end of the day it's all quite simple and now with tools like this it's it, it, it's too simple it's it, it's easier than ever barrier of entry 
is so low, that's not a bad thing. That means we get more art, that means we get better products, that means games, movie, media, entertainment, we see it a lot as slow slop. But if we as artists take something that we're given like this, we can interpret how to take it that much further. And if I had to model this as just a 3D artist, I think it would probably take me a couple hours if I was really, really pushing myself to the limit. And I don't think I would manage to quite keep a lot of the shapes, forms and unions that I've got with this axe. So that was kind of just a talk about how you can take something and bring it so much further. Um, but what we do now in this part of the video from here is we will make something okay so in this part i'm going to use Korea because i'm just a fan of it i mean you get daily usage amount it doesn't go up crazy the image generation costs a bit but that's to be expected but the enhancer is okay it's 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 really good so the fact that it doesn't use too much is uh is great it also has a good upscaler which is very nice uh, as a legacy model and there's some other models you can use that's dope uh, one of the things that i really like is that you can take an image this is an image that i've got from uh, korea's image generation awesome um you can actually click this describe button and it will just it, it will just go and uh for an example you can just take what you want depicting it and then you can go to chat gpt of a i don't know just put that in for korea so we'll know now in this case this would be to generate it okay so we'll put that in there. So now we can just copy that. And we'll just show the image generation. Because hopefully these prompts are good. And they seem pretty damn good. This one seems... Yeah, this one seems good. So we're just going to do... It's a free program. Um, you can use Photoshop, but again, the intention is not to show things that are super costly or out of the reach for most people. I mean, it should be able to run on your PC. It shouldn't have to be an insane PC. It should be mostly free within daily use or cost, and it shouldn't be hard to understand, I think. So um, a lot of people out there might go, well, there's better ways to do this you could automate that you could make a macro you could do this and that um no that i can't be bothered that's not really the um apparently i have a file named five already forgive me um six um uh yeah you can um and if you're uh, you have the know-how and you want to do it go ahead but in this case it's just uh showing it as a tutorial so more accessible and, and easy to follow uh, the better so i'm just gonna take the crop tool click the crop tool up in the top left after drag the image in click on one of the angles um and then you can export the shift control e so maybe it's good to remember that if you're being fast uh my bread is terrible uh shift control e we'll go in that order i suppose uh and then just name it like one and you're gonna put it in that file so we got the original name plus my that's why the prompt Click that, um, and again, we're, we're being simple, so I'm just going to control Z and then enter and then do the same thing. So, shift control E and then two and so forth. Um, already skipped this part of the video because we understand. Okay, so the models have generated. There's a few versions, but this is my favorite. It actually turned out to be the extreme low poly, I think. Wonderful. Um, the others, there's not too much of a difference, if I'm being honest. They are just 
more polys and a little bit more detail. Also, some are in the T-pose and some aren't in the T-pose. In this case, it's well, kind of an A-pose. But what you're looking for is the thing is to be as spread apart as they can and uh, the quality of the mesh to be pretty much as, as affordable, which will be as low as you can because you can always go higher. The upscale model will run an upscale. And again, it might seem kind of insignificant, but it's actually quite a big deal when it comes to the sharpness of the image. So we'll download that one now. And we will drag that one in. It won't be non-color, that's just because of my transforms, so you guys won't have to worry about that. Uh, yeah, this is pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click export. A and the X. The roughness and stuff won't be carried over, but it doesn't matter because you know we can just drag our textures back over our character if we're being lazy. Uh, and I also can't be bothered to name it. And yeah, I mean, mesh. There is no armature, there is no animation, etc. Pretty um, self explanatory and, and quite simple. So I don't think you really have to worry about any of that. I mean, I guess that is the beauty of all of this, is it's, it's all quite simple. Um, next, and then, you know, elbows, I guess his elbows are kind of here, his chin is kind of here, uh, his wrists are, you know, here, knees are here, it's going to take us about a few seconds to actually texture this thing, and then here, and then next. And as it says, it would take about two minutes, which is pretty impressive. It only really takes that long. Yeah, this is basically your character rigged. And now you could bring in all your different poses or just with it, with a rig, because it has a skeleton now. Well, but ignore that, that's just, that's gobbledygook in the, in the meantime. Um, so yeah, we can preview these animations now. Very cool, you know, you wanted the robot in your scene for a, a small um, animation. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to grab a single pose. download that um, you can do with or without I'm gonna do with with skin it means the, the, the mesh um, and you've got different formats we're just gonna leave we're just gonna leave all of that and again if you're in 4.43 which I am in blender right now once it's downloads you can just drag and drop because luckily that's where we are with blender now which is fantastic so I'm just gonna drag that file over and import it um, and what it gives us is the armature character. So now our character both has a rig. Um, and if we go to the timeline, has some bones. So there's uh, there's like a pose, which we're gonna get rid of. Um, and obviously if we wanted this texture, that blender with one texture, we can just sort of drag it over and it's there, which is fantastic. Um, so now we have a pose, which is cool. If you wanted to start from that, we can reset your pose. If you don't have shortcuts and binds, which you're going to see me do a lot of the time and things like this being at the bottom, the header that is, might be a little bit confusing because it's usually at the top. So you would just go pose and then clear transform and then all. But what you can do is you can go clear transform and then you can put it on your quick favorites or you can go one deeper and quick favorite all like I have. And then when you make any transforms, so we have a skeleton, or in pose mode, so object mode, to pose mode. If we go to this little man here in viewport, we can click in front, and now we can actually see what's going on. We also get the benefit of clicking like, let's say N, and going to the N panel, and clicking something like um, auto mirror. This does have a case with the end of the names being mirrored by uh, dot L, I think, and dot R. I'm using F to, to rename. That was dot L, so dot R. 
um, and then mirroring actually works, so that's a handy trick for people who might be getting a bit confused with how Linux handling it. Um, so now you've got that, that's cool. If you click auto IK, some of the bones might have um, IK, which means you can move around the, the bones, not for animation, but for posing in a way that it feels a little bit more natural and easy, so that's, that's awesome. No add-ons, nothing like that. Um, what else is super easy and good to know? I mean, that is pretty much it. If we needed a character, this is a great, you know, if you needed to pose, there's some parts where the weights might be a little bit off, but in general, um, yeah, without any cleanup, this is a really good character, to be honest, and especially for the fact that I would probably use something like this for blocking out, and because, oh, sorry, not blocking out, but... Um, for backgrounds and stuff. If I was doing blocking out, I would make my own model version of it. But, you know, you could have so many versions of this character in a, in an army or something. And, um, yeah, you, you could you could afford to just have a lot of instances of, especially something in, like, Unreal Engine. And the, the little army that you need is, uh, it's ready to go. It's actually quite crazy. Yeah, turn off the metallic so we don't like robot guys. Robocop, eat your heart out. And uh, sometimes just for like artwork and stuff, you, you need this sort of imposing um, type of thing where you want lots of characters, but you don't want to spend all the time. I guess these are tied. I don't know why these are tied. It should be two different. Oh, I duplicated the wrong thing. Where you uh, you just want a whole army, and you know you like have to spare on the quality. Whereas now you can sort of you know have your imposing army, and it doesn't cost too much. And you didn't have to sculpt for like fifteen hours for a character that's only going to be seen in the background with some depth of field. I mean, it's it's pretty crazy. <laughs>